let's begin to write our first API test using JavaScript. Hey there, welcome to Automation Bro. If you're new here, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon to get notified of my newly uploaded content. So in this video, we will start off with writing our first API test using JavaScript. Make sure to watch my installation video if you haven't already to see how to get your base framework set up and rest you can follow along from this video. Now let's take a look at what we will be automating. So in the previous video, I mentioned that we will be using this website, which is gorest.co.in. So this website basically provide us with bunch of free APIs to use. So the very first thing we're going to do is click on the login button here. And then it's going to ask you to do authentication. So you can do it via Google, Facebook or GitHub. In my case, I'm going to do it via Google. So once I'm logged in, I'll be back. So once you're logged in, you will see this screen with your access token, which we will be using throughout our videos. You can also click on the regenerate access token, which will basically give you a new token. So make sure to note this down as we will be using that throughout our videos. Now let's go back to home page. So I'm just going to copy this first and then go back to home page. Now over here, the very first API we're going to be automating is this one, which is public API slash users. Now if I open this up in the new tab, so it's opening up this page and it's basically doing a get call on slash users API. And we can find that out by doing right click, inspect, make sure using Chrome for this. And if I go to network and I'm going to reload and I can see this users over here. So this is the users API we're going to automate. So we have the users call here. We are doing a get call and we're getting the status code. We can also see the response, which is the entire thing over here. And it's also in a nice format here. I can look at preview and kind of see the same data that we're showing up over here. So let's get started with this and begin to write our first API test. So I'm back in VS code. And over here, we're going to write our first test. So in a previous video, we created this users.js file. If you haven't created it, make sure to create it under the test folder. And in our package JSON, if I scroll up, we have the script where we are basically just running mocha. So mocha will find this test folder and any files under that it will run. So if I do mocha right now or just do npm test and hit enter, this would run this mocha command. And it will try to execute our test. So in this case, we don't really have any tests. So it will just say zero test passing. So let's see if this works. Okay, there you go. So that worked. It says zero passing and it took a while to actually run this. Okay, so I'm going to go back to users.js and over here, we're going to begin to write our first test. So the first thing we need to do is since we're using super test, we have to import that library. So I'm going to do import super test from the super test library. There you go. So this is the first thing. And second, once we have imported super test, we have to actually do uh, create a request basically. So I'll do a const request. So you can name this anything. It doesn't really matter, but request is standard. So I'll do that. Now we'll do super test and super test takes a URL. So uh, either an app or URL. In this case, we will pass in our gorest.co.in URL. So I will do that. Uh, for that, I'm going to go back to the site over here, copy this head back to users.js and then basically paste this here. Okay, so one thing to notice is this is their overall URL. This is not their API. For their API, they actually have a separate URL. So if we go back here, this is the URL that they have for their API. So we have to add that in. So if you notice here, they are doing gorest.co.in uh, slash public APIs and then slash the users. So actually we will add this in. So I'm going to copy this here. And then go back to VS code and basically paste that here. Okay, awesome. So we have our request created. Now we can actually start calling this request, add in users API and then actually do create our test. So let's get started. Um, so we have our super test created. Now, next thing we're going to do is using mocha, I'm going to create a describe block and then I will do users and then I will create another it block. And then I would do, since we're doing a get on users, I will name that same thing over there. And basically then this is where we will start writing a test. So, so far what I did is created a describe block. What this does is basically group our multiple of our test and it block basically is our actual test. So the first thing we need to do is create a request dot get. So I will do request and then here I can do dot get since we're doing a get call. And this is the users API we are automating. So I'm going to do users. So it will do basically 
this particular thing slash users it would add in a users over here so i'm going to do users and then we need to make sure that we are passing in the token so the way to do that is if I actually head back to chrome so i'm going to go to the first tab and if you notice they have a rest console here so if i open that up, up in a new tab so here you can see basically you can make an api call over here so this is a rest console just like postman they have provided the web version of that so they are doing a get on the public API users and they're providing this authorization and this is the token that we are using. So they're doing this bearer and then providing this token. So there's one way of providing this, but what we will do is the other way. So if we scroll down, they're gonna show you the different ways you can pass in the token. So one is the basic auth uh, where you're sending in the username password and the other is through query parameter. So this is the way we're gonna use is through a uh, question mark here, access token and then pass in our token. So let's do that. I'm going to go back to our test and over here just pass in the token so it's basically going to take the token here so what I'm going to do is copy that token uh, from Chrome um, actually let me go back there and go here access token copy my token add back to this code all right and then basically paste our token here so that's good so we have our request.get we are passing in this users api and then passing in the token and we have added the token in there so that's good um so this is becoming really long so what we can do is actually i'm gonna remove this from here and then create a new token so i'll just do const token and then basically put our token here so that the string is not that long and i can replace this with token change this to use the string over here template string okay so this way we have our request get users and it's looking much cleaner we have the token over here awesome so we have that um and now we need to get the response from the actual token so we do that by doing and error we pass in the error response and then using the error bracket okay so over here is where we will actually get a response so we can do that by doing first of all console log so let's print it out rest.body and we will also do rest.error just to see what it will print up or sorry just the error okay so that's good and one thing we need to make sure okay if i'm running this test so we have everything covered here so i will do npm test to run our test let's see what happens okay so it did get users and the test passed and we are basically seeing all the response over here so error is basically null and then we see all the response that came over uh, over here so that's perfect this is exactly what we wanted and it will match uh, what we saw in the chrome api call over there so now it's time to add our assertion so for our assertion we will be using the child library so let's import that i'm going to do import and we're going to use expo uh, expect interface from the child library so i'll do import expect not export default import expect from chat and i'll save this okay now we're going to add in our session over here i will remove the console logs to do that we'll do expect now what are we actually asserting so if you notice i'm going to scroll up so we have our data which is coming up with this all this array and it has the total length of 20 which is the limit we have added over here so to make it really simple what we're gonna do is that the data is coming up with some kind of length so maybe actually let's make sure we do that the data is not empty that's all we're gonna test so what i'm gonna do is add rest dot body dot data and this should be to not be empty so this is one of the chai um, assertion that you can add in here so expect something to not be empty so let's run this to see if this actually works i'm gonna do npm test and we'll run this. okay so our test ran and there's basically no error so it took over all 44 millisecond and everything passed awesome so this is exactly what we wanted so our first test is completed so before we move on to the next test let's make sure to fail our test so the reason we are doing that is every time you write a test what you should always try to do is make sure your session is actually running so you will see what I mean by that. So right now we are verifying if this is not empty, right? Now let's remove not 
and expect it to be empty, right? So we won't change anything else. We'll keep everything else same and we'll make sure that the data returned is empty and we'll run this again. Okay, so let's see what happened there. Let me pull this up. So we see that our test passed, which is weird because it shouldn't have passed. It should have thrown an error. And if you notice, there is an error right after that. So it says assertion error expected array 20 to be empty, which is exactly what we were expecting. We were expecting this to be empty, but technically it's not because we're getting a data back, right? So our test should have failed. So what exactly happened here? Well, let's take a look at this. So what's happening is when we are making this get call, it's an asynchronous call. That means it's actually running and it's taking some time for the response to come back. That's so happening in the background. So maybe this is taking, let's say 30 milliseconds for this whole thing to be completed. So what Mocha is looking at is, okay, it runs this command. It's making that API call. It says, oh, there's no particular error. It takes a look, it basically skips over this assertion because this is part of the whole one thing. And it comes to the next line. It says, hey, is something in here? Well, there's nothing there. So it just says, okay, everything looks good. There's no error and the test is working. So once basically the whole thing passed and you will see the reason we saw this error is because afterwards this callback comes back or the asynchronous call actually passes and then we will see, oh, well, something went wrong and this failed. So how do we fix this? Because we want our test to fail the moment there's an error, right? So to do that, we will add in a done condition. So what done does is I will add in here. It's basically a done callback and we will add done here. So it will wait for this done callback to be initiated. And this will happen only once basically we run our request.get. Mocha will see that there is a done uh, method over here or done callback over here. So it will wait for this to be completed. So basically it will wait for this asynchronous call to be completed because it knows there is a done there. And then only it will actually move on and complete our test. Until this is not done, it will keep on waiting. So if we run this again and I do npm test, there you go. This time our test actually failed and we got a proper error. So it says uncaught assertion error, expected array 20 to be empty. That's perfect. This is exactly what we wanted. We want our test to fail because the data is actually coming back. So this is great. This is exactly how you would want to write your test. So I'm going to change this back to to not be empty, which is the right case. And I will run npm test again. Awesome. Now our test is working. And if you notice here, it's actually taking like 1132 millisecond, which is more than what it was taking uh, before. So before it was, if you scroll up, uh, actually, can I can find it up below over here. No, nope. pull up. Okay, so it was only taking 40 milliseconds because like I said, it runs this. It says, hey, nothing is happening. It will move on to the next thing and it will say, oh, our test is working. Everything is great. And this is asynchronous call is happening in the background. And while that's happening, obviously, this is taking like 1000 milliseconds. So this time it actually runs this. It says, oh, there's a done uh, callback over there. So it waits for that to be completed. And then only it will actually finish our test. So the overall thing took uh, one second. Okay, so this was basically our first test. Hope you understood. All we did was basically make a get call to our users API, added in our token, and then we added our assertion. And after a session, we added this done callback, which is basically waiting for our test to be completed. And once this is working, our entire test pass or fails, depending on whichever condition you have. So there you go. We wrote our first API test. Hope you didn't have much issues writing that test. Let me know in the comments below if you have automated your APIs in the past. If so, which tools and technologies have you used? So in the next video, we will continue writing our get test and explore different ways to write get test. So if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel as that's how I know you guys are really enjoying the content. And if you'd like to support my work, you can do that by buying me a cup of coffee. Alright guys, see you in the next one. Keep testing, keep smiling.